Hi, and welcome to Vibing With, brought to you by Puzzle of Color. Today we're vibing with Kayla Jewett. Kayla Jewett is a full-time freelance illustrator and tattoo artist who graduated from the Arts Academy of Cincinnati. Kayla likes to use healing and strong color palettes to communicate her emotions to the viewer. She finds inspiration in nature, color, and light. Caitlin is the artist behind Strength, one of our 500-piece puzzles in our debut collection. Well, yeah. So I, I know we've spoken a little bit, but it's been a while since we actually had to, like, you know, talk and chop it up again. So tell the audience a little more about yourself. Um, well, uh, like I said, um, like you said, I am a freelance illustrator, and I do a lot of, like, um kids book illustrations and um like private commissions a lot of people who like um more spiritual like um portrait um they've been coming to me um getting kind of like these readings through like um my work like i will envision them and basically they're just trying to ha have my vision applied to their portrait or their selfie that they send me as reference and then i kind of go off of that and build like um what i envision of them through their energy that they're like exuding through the uh photograph and and through talking to them and what finding out things that they like and figuring out how i can push that in a portrait that's very creative yeah that's basically what i do and i also do um tattoos um in jacksonville florida that's awesome. cool you brought up tattoos so how how uh how'd you get into like tattoo artists to make a tattoo with tattoos um, I got into it um, by chance here in Jacksonville, and um, I, it, it kind of was always a dream, and I, I wanted to do it for so long, and then um, a random opportunity presented itself to me, and I was like, I can't, you know, pass it up, because then I can just indulge in doing art all the time, yeah. and in different mediums, because I'm I love doing different mediums. Um, I think the piece um, that originally inspired the um, puzzle, the strength puzzle, um, that piece, it started out as an oil painting and then I like scanned it and um, I did some like digital stuff on top and I just started editing it so much that it was kind of nothing like how it started out. To that is so cool. I didn't, you didn't tell us that before. It's, that's a really cool. <laughs> yeah, no, like um, my work always evolves like that. Like I, I'll sketch something out some way and then it completely changes or it like was once a, you know, graphite drawing and then I just like take it to a different level. Yeah. So how, how does it compare doing like to do it, doing a tattoo versus doing digital art or painting or like all the different mediums? Like how did, how did they compare? Um, tattooing is very fun because like it seems like you're kind of um, putting something onto a person permanently and it's like everything counts for something yeah. like every movement every stroke kind of um, so it's like kind of like um, it kind of creates this environment and headspace where you're like self to be in and that you're like very present with the person very present with the work and just trying like you know, your your best to articulate the vision. Um, with a digital painting, I can be as meticulous as I want to be, redraw the same thing over again, like five times and nobody would ever know. <laughs> I do that all the time. Um, you can spend like 20 or 30 hours in a piece. Um, that is like my favorite thing about digital art is you can be as meticulous as possible and um, you can just, develop so many different details that you wouldn't be able to in any other medium. Awesome. That, that's, yeah, I never thought about the different, yeah, that you can spend hours doing that and then with the, the, the tattoos, like, that's, like, a lot of pressure. <laughs> it's going to be on somebody forever. Like, like I think about a commercial where the guy, like, that does the tattoo and he, and he says regret instead of regrets. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just like a lot of focus uh, with tattooing you're like um making sure that you have every you double checked everything that's just like meticulous work it's just like breathing through things and if you got a good stencil you've got a good base and it the tattoo will generally turn out pretty good but it's just like breathing and making sure that you're just like flowing so i know you have like a lot of different yeah, mediums of like I guess like skin and uh, paint and canvas and stuff like that. 
So like, how mm-hmm. do you decide your like style? Do you think you have like a particular style that you? Well, I have. I feel like I have multiple different styles, and they're all for different things. Um, some people prefer, like, some clients prefer that I work in my more realistic style, which is kind of. Um, it's kind of like the style that strength is done in um where uh everything is rendered to look exactly kind of like a person and um there's not a lot of hard lines and if there are like anything kind of uh, magical in it it's kind of like whimsical looking and it's like airbrushed out and the brush strokes are very apparent so um that look is very specific and then i've developed another style that's more imaginative and like it allows for a lot more fun to happen um because i can use a lot of like line work and then um it seems like it I have a really good line work base. I can be as imaginative as I want to with the color. So um, there's like another style I've developed where it's like a lot more hardcore illustrative, where it's like a lot of focused lines and it's like kind of a coloring book. Like if you took all the color, I imagine someone would have a lot of fun coloring it. Ooh, that sounds fun. You need to do a coloring book. That's next, next, next. Uh, I'm working class. on a coloring book. Um, I'm working on publishing it later, either this year or um, next. I I can't remember the exact date. Cool. So back to strength. What was? Who is the woman in that picture? Is it? Is it somebody that you know? Is it just you know something of your imagination? Like I know because you're saying it's very realistic. Like is it somebody specific? Oh, um, no, it wasn't anyone specific. Um, I think that I um, kind of have studied like drawing a, a profile enough times to be able to make up um, a person out of my head. So um, it started off as a painting. I can't even re- remember the painting. Oh, I do remember the painting. Um, I, I could send you a picture um, sometime, but there, there was a picture um, that was realistic and it was an oil painting and I spent like a year, a year and a half painting it or something obnoxious. And I didn't like <laughs> where it went, but um, I like scanned it in and then um, I did a bunch, I took a lot away, like a lot of times um, for my paintings, like my traditional paintings, I like it to look a little bit more rough and like underdeveloped. And that's what I like the most about oil paintings is the rougher, less detailed, um, simple, but like not, but like just expressive enough. Um, It's so weird to explain it that way, but people know what I mean. Um, But um, yeah, I uh, had a piece like that and I wanted to subtract from it. So I like just, subtracted all the weird stuff that I didn't like from it and then just built it up to be what I wanted it to be. And um, the original piece has no yellow in it. Um, I did that specifically for um, the puzzle. Mm -hmm. And the colors, they're supposed to be very muted. The purples are very like um, what I imagine imprisoned purple, like if you imprison purple for a long time, it would be that like muted, sad color, depressed purple. Um, so it's, I feel like it is very reflective of a time. Um, she's not supposed to be anybody. She could be anybody, but she's yeah. supposed to re- like represent an experience of like, um, being trapped in a place or or that you don't want to be in and maybe that's mentally maybe it's literally but um and have it just maintaining an inner strength and an inner like an inner you know strength (laughs) like it's just supposed to represent a time and um for puzzles of color I added the yellow so that it lightened lightens it up a little bit because um for the original concept i feel like it was a little bit more down like it was a little bit more um depressed in um 
like communication of it like to the viewer was supposed to cause more depression and um it for for puzzles of color i kind of spruced up the work a little bit and added some yellow in and um just a few different purple tones and cleaned it up a little bit in a way that it like is a little bit more um loud in its strength and it's not so like so rooted in solitude was there a moment in your own life where you had to stand in your strength and like that kind of helped inspire the actual image. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think I was just like kind of working a job that I really disliked and was like in a waiting period of um, being able to do art full time. And it's just representative of having to do like this kind of work that you don't want to do um, or just be in that place and, you know, do what you're not meant to do until you can do what you want to do full time. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah I feel like for sure. That's kind of what we're in the middle of right now with our nine to fives, you know, you have to do what you got to do to get to make to get by. But if you really want to do your passion, which is kind of like us, which is supposed to call it as our passion. So, yeah, that's, that's very relatable. I know I so many everybody. people can relate to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so i i know like uh I, i'm not correct me if i'm wrong but are you like are you are you a full-time vegan or are you just doing like you know uh, oh i am a full-time vegan i um i've been vegan for the past six maybe almost years really? oh, i'm going on year six i had oh, a, I, 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 try, <laughs> I try to be vegan for like I don't know, I did it for like a week and it was it wasn't <laughs> terrible, but actually it was actually pretty good. I, if you like you find the right food options, I think it was really great. But I just have been able to like to commit to that. It's such a like uh you gotta find um I was pescatarian for like ten years before I was yeah. vegan. So it's um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was pescatarian from like seventh grade till somewhere in college and then um it was like all on my own accord. My parents were like really <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, so I think I stayed up late watching some animal cruelty video on like TBS I wasn't supposed to see. Yeah. And then I was like, I don't want to eat meat anymore. I don't want to eat death. And um, <laughs> my mom was like, the only way you can do that is if you eat fish too. And then I was like, oh, fine. Okay, I'll take it. Yeah. Um, and then it just stuck with it stuck with me for a long time. And um, I think the ve vegan mentality kind of feeds into all of what I do on a daily basis anyways. Like um, I keep it keeps my mind like sharp and like focused for creative purposes, I feel. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I couldn't do the work that I do um, if I were eating like processed food so much and like consuming meat, the chemicals that they put in meat and stuff like that. So for sure. I actually have a cousin that has been he he's he's back and forth. Like he's been he was vegan for years. He just started back eating meat, but he's like, especially in America versus another country, like he's like visited other countries and will eat will eat meat there. But he's like we're we're gonna gonna the who do that. What? I've heard of people who do that, where they're vegan for the most part, 90% of the time, but whenever they're traveling, they eat meat and they eat like stuff from the country. Yeah. I don't know if I would do that. I'm not sure. Um, I think the answer is no, but you know, I've never been to Japan before, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I might with some red uh, or whatever. <laughs> no. I'm, I imagine it's pretty easy to say no to most things. I yeah. more so want to go to like a lot of tropical places and eat a lot of fruit. Yeah. It's okay, yeah. I, I feel like the majority of the foods I eat, well, I mean, I do like meat a lot, but like I could also, I, I could also go like a long time without eating meat. Like it, the hard part for me with vegan is just, is the dairy in things. Like, uh, dairy should be the easiest part yeah. to give up because dairy is just so not good for you on in the I first know. place. <laughs> I know, I know it's not good for you, but I love cheese. Hey. Hey. <laughs> no, but they, they do make good vegan cheeses out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Follow your brand is no joke. And depending where you live, you have way better access to way better vegan foods um, yeah. than other people. Yeah. And I think Texas is actually pretty innovative for their vegan food 
and Atlanta and like shockingly Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> wow. Interesting. I, that's, I, I wanted that. to know. Exactly. Yeah, exactly yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, veganism and the whole thing about not consuming like animal products definitely contributes to how I view my artwork and how I like like to work and be the headspace I like to be in whenever I'm working. I love that. Yes. Yeah. Such an interesting, like you know, way of living. It's a full. It's it's not just uh, one yeah. thing. It's it, it it applies to everything, which I love. <laughs> Switch your gears a little bit. How was it when you saw your puzzle for the first time? Saw your art as a puzzle. Mm-hmm. Got your like first experience to like really see your art. Um, your it was super cool. I love seeing my work as a puzzle. I have not finished my puzzle. I'm still in the works. <laughs> um, I was like in the like and when i was dividing everything i first of all don't i am not the best at puzzles i thought it was a cool that my work is going to be on the puzzle but i am not the best at puzzles not to say that i don't do puzzles but it's just difficult (laughs) so i was separating everything as best as i could in an organized fashion and i was like this is kind of cool because people are interacting with my work in a way where they have to put it together and it's kind of cool especially the how i felt and interpreted the artwork is people um so when people are putting it together i feel like it kind of communicates to what i meant um with the artwork about it like um being reflective of a time of strength and stuff like that especially during this time period where we're all kind of alone and we kind of all are afraid of the pandemic and stuff so it's like a cool way to like um interact with like art and art that actually means something absolutely yeah like i know like for us when we you know since we do cut the puzzles in house like when we when it runs through the machine like you see it all in one big piece and then it runs through the machine and it cuts it into little pieces and we're backing them and it's like oh my gosh look at that piece like look at those flecks of color that like you did, would have never really noticed when you're looking at the big picture but when you right. see like yeah look at that person's that's her eye you know and like when you're seeing this yeah oh, yeah so cool. <laughs> I I thought the same thing when I was uh, separating them by color. I was like, the color, I love it. But it is definitely reflective of sadness, but it's it's a vibe for sure. But like, I liked seeing them, the teals and then the yellows. It was just so perfect. So speaking of vibes, what type of music kind of like inspires your work or inspires you as an artist? inspires me as an artist, definitely not my work. Um, I listen to literally (laughs) nothing but trippy red. Uh, It's just on a constant loop. Uh, (laughs) I don't know what happened, but like, uh, like a year ago, uh, maybe it's like April last year, something just happened. And it's the only thing I listen to these days. (laughs) Uh, so I guess for the past like what ten months I've just been listening to nothing but trippy red. Uh, I don't know. It, it inspires me because I feel like uh, it's definitely like very emotionally driven music, and um, I get something out of it that is completely imagined. Like it would be so hard to articulate what I get out of it because sometimes you know, um, the, I don't resonate with everything that he's saying, of course, and the um, but but the energy behind it is very like something I feel like I can respect and admire. And um, but I do alternate. I get tired of him sometimes. You don't listen to just, but it it is mainly it's like eighty percent, and then the other twenty percent is like uh, sad girl music, like. Um, alternative sad girl music some like i don't know if you guys ever heard of dream girl or um um, there's just some other weird music that i like just listen to (laughs) that's all like sad bedroom pop music um girl bands you know um, stuff of that vibe i love it well you know we it's so funny because like when we're cutting puzzles like i'll put my phone on like or either one of us will put our phones on like shuffle and it'll be anything from I have one little baby shark. It can be, you know, 
Sir, so it it's like such a variety, and then it's like anybody just walking by would be like, "What is going on here?" Because it's, it's not everybody, you're not everybody, but a lot of people have like this very diverse taste in music, and like whatever you know they're feeling at the moment is what they you know can yeah. listen to, or or they can be fine with shuffling it and just let's go, let's, let's go with what iPhone wants me to listen to today. No, I want to listen to the same favorited five songs from Trippy Red every, every <laughs> single day, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I've always listened to Dig Music. I can't listen to just like the same songs. I Actually, I took that back because Kid Cudi's album, I could play that like, this newest album you had, I played that like eight times probably in a row. That's a good album. <laughs> Just about I haven't got a chance to check that out. It's I, really good. I still listen to Rihanna anti. Like that's like I'm like, please, please come out with another album. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I can I will listen to like if I like something, I will listen to it on repeat until I'm sick of it. And I can be yes. <laughs> I feel like this. Yeah, I am not sick of hearing the same, you know, three songs over and over again yet, but I'll get there, I'm sure. Music has its seasons as well, like you were saying. So you definitely like, you can be in a season where you just listen to one artist all the time, or like just our style. Because I don't like, I'm a, I sometimes, sometimes I listen to like just R&B. Sometimes yeah. I'm like, all right, back to hip hop, only hip hop. So I'm like, listen to like Casey Musgraves, country stuff. Yeah. Which is, a, I listen to a lot of country, but that. Yeah, yeah, I'm totally. Probably the person I listen to the most in country. <laughs> no, not not so not no. Uh, no, no, I was actually, uh, anyway, I Another guess. favorite of my child. <laughs> of course, every every child. Every loves baby loves Old Town Road. <laughs> yeah. Really? Oh yeah, it's got a good beat. She loves. She just bounces around and stuff. <laughs> so, is there a particular like feeling of music that you uh, musical feeling you get from your strength uh, puzzle? <sighs> I would almost get silence from it, to be honest. It's, uh, or a static. If I were assuming, maybe it's like a frequency or something, I don't know. Um, it's maybe like music out of focus. Like if there were a way to have that as a genre, it would be just like inaudible kind of sad lo-fi vibes maybe. Like maybe some Inya. <laughs> Like, I don't know. Like, you know she's got to got like just like a moaning general. I don't know. Yeah, or just anything with like a steady kind of, but like it's out of focus or something. Interesting. I like like whale answer. sounds. <laughs> I guess, yeah. Would that be, <laughs> oh, that's interesting. I said just background music kind of, right? Just kind of like fuzzy background music. Yeah, that's what I imagine. If I had to, like, really think about a uh, music that belonged to it, I would be, like, maybe some music that's, like, not in focus, that's, like, playing in the background. You're not really paying attention to it. It really doesn't matter. It's just kind of, like, the thought processes that the music and the artwork kind of are, like, sparking um, together. That's, that's good, because I kind of, like, I feel like that relates to our what we want to do with our with the podcast is with the uh, actual we want to do like a playlist and i feel like focus should be, it should be on the puzzle but like in the background you have this music playing that kind of like gives you like a somber feeling or a feeling that like feels like it matches the puzzle you're working on so i feel like that kind of like mm -hmm. it's supposed to be like background music you're not supposed to like focus on it too much but you can also hear it because you're like you know your main focus is putting this puzzle together, but also, you know, you want to have something like just to be. To give you the vibe. Yeah, to vibe with. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well, we'll have to ask. I wonder, it'll be interesting to hear what, like, the general audience, you know, like people who are enjoying your puzzle, um, you know, what kind of music they, they resonates with them in the puzzle. Yeah, that would be super interesting to to know what other people thought about like uh, the energy they get from it or what it means to them whenever they look at it. But yeah, yeah. I got to tell you, your puzzle is doing amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I was it's so crazy. I was literally going through and like we were fulfilling orders and I was like trying to find because I was like, man, we're almost out of strength. Like I need to I need to like just go. To, I need to fulfill orders that don't include that one. And then I come back to it. And I was like, 
Oh my gosh, they're every single order has strength in it. You would think I was, we were giving it away <laughs> free with purchase or something. Like, what is going on? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's crazy. That is awesome to hear because I swear I almost didn't even post the image in the first place, like the original image in the first place, because I was just in such a, um, sore headspace about it that I just was like, I don't think I'm going to post this. And then um, it is one of my more purchased prints on my Etsy account. Um, but so so that's the only thing that kept me like being like, OK, this is um, an OK piece or, or whatever. But um, I was bothered by it like a little bit. I just I kind of seeing it as a puzzle has given it new life and I think that it's given me a different perspective on the time that I was creating it and um the yellow uh, like adding the yellow as the um for the puzzles of color just kind of like really accelerated it to a different level of appreciation uh, for me well it's great to to for people to be able to you know like you said like reflect and see it in a different light I mean, you know, and that's the beautiful thing about seeing it in those little pieces and really just putting it together and like, and doing it over time, you know, like you may be in a bad mood one day and a good mood another day and you, and all those emotions get wrapped up in putting that puzzle together. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, I had a question. Oh, so last, last kind of question and then we're going to like let you go. Uh, (laughs) but, uh. Erica here wants a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have never. I, me and my husband neither have. Neither of us have tattoos. I just I got my ears pierced recently, <laughs> but I like. <laughs> but I'm like, how bad? How how? They have to. I just hear they hurt, so I'm yeah. annoyed. And then I'm like, where do I where do I want it? It's not going to look crazy when I'm old. You know? <laughs> So I have to like, I yeah, really have to think about it. <laughs> you have any suggestions for like tattoos or places? Uh, I didn't hear that last part. I said you have like suggestions of like where to get a tattoo or like locations and all. Um, the easier parts are like the tops of the arms and like here. This sometimes is a little bit tender for certain people. Um, obviously avoid the hands as much as possible. Um, they're painful. Um. Some, some people get their starter tattoo right underneath their collarbone, and that doesn't hurt as much. Um, if you have a little bit of muscle tissue here, um, I find that it doesn't hurt the client as much. Um, but if you got like a bird chest, it might hurt a little bit more. Cool. Good cool. to know. I'll Sorry. have to... I'll have to head on out to, to visit you and get a tattoo. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time on your day off to to chat with us and chat with the audience and you know all the people who are enjoying your puzzle to give them a perspective to hear, let them hear your perspective of the piece itself and for vibing with us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, where can everybody uh, where can everybody find you on uh, on the socials and stuff like that? Um, on Instagram at Caitlin June underscore June. Caitlin underscore June. Okay. Why did I draw like on my own URL? I don't know. Um, but yes, it was. Um, you can find me on Twitter or Instagram. And then you have an Etsy too, so they can get to get some prints. Yes, possibly. yes. and you can purchase uh, a print of strength. Uh. I've been getting a few um, people hitting my um, Etsy and and buying the original. A few a few people have done that. I feel like they're from the puzzles of color people, or like they are from seeing you guys or something like that, and just wanting to buy, like reach out and purchase. So it's been awesome. Thank you for joining us for an episode of Vibing with. Be sure to purchase a puzzle by this talented artist at puzzlesofcolor.com. You can also listen to a curated playlist of music to pair with their puzzle on Spotify and Apple Music. Just search for Puzzles of Color.